Like 12 a March 26, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have uh, one, one item on the agenda this evening that we're going to be hearing. Um, and at some point we'll be opening it up to public comment. At that point, please just stand next to the podium. Everybody will be sworn in. State your name and address for the court reporter. And uh, we have a clock, so we ask you to limit your time to three minutes. Okay, that's it. I'll read the notice. Yeah. It's quite lengthy, so I'm going to, I believe most people have seen it already, but I'm going to read it very quickly. Under the, with the understanding that it's been properly noticed. Yes. Uh, Sorry, I make a motion to open well, ZBA-18-19. ZBA All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And this is an application by uh, the Office of Building, Zoning, and Planning Administration Enforcement of the Town of Orangetown, also known as OBSPAE, O-B-Z-P-A-E, for implement, implementation of specific condition four of the May 11, 2017, ZBA decision number 17-31, regarding the performance standards application of API Industries, Inc., DBA Aloof Plastics, also known as Aloof, for premises located at 2 Glenshaw Street, Orangeburg, New York, as more specifically described in the February 16, 2018 report to the ZBA by Jane Slavin, RA, Director of OBSPAE, and Michael Manzari, Building Inspector of OBSPAE, which application and report by OBSPAE is summarized below. OPSPAE's February 16, 2018 report to the ZBA may be viewed and or copies obtained for a fee at OPSPAE's offices during regular business hours. OPSPAE's February 16, 2018 report was submitted to the ZBA as per, as per specific condition four of decision number 17-31, which specific condition four states in relevant part for this notice. Open quote, OBSPAE shall investigate any alleged violation of performance standards by ALUF, and if there are reasonable grounds to believe that a violation exists, OBSPAE shall notify the ZBA of the occurrence or existence of a probable violation thereof, and the ZBA shall investigate the alleged violation, and for such investigation may employ qualified expert consultants, and if, after holding a public hearing on due notice, including notice to ALUF, uh, the ZBA finds that a violation occurred or exists, the ZBA may revoke and rescind approval decision 1731, and any building permit and or certificate of occupancy that has been issued based upon approval decision 1731 shall also be deemed revoked and rescinded, end quote. OBSPAE's February 16, 2018 report to the ZBA also referenced specific conditions 2 and 3B of decision 17-31, which said specific conditions state in relevant part for this notice, open quote, two. Pursuant to Orangetown Zoning Code section 4.13, section 10.334C, and section 10.335, initial and continued compliance with the performance standards shall be required, and any building permit or certificate oc occupancy issued shall be conditioned, uh, conditioned on, amongst other things, aloofs completed installations in operation conforming to the performance standards and a loose paying of the fees to the town for services of the town's own expert consultant or consultants deemed reasonable and necessary by OBSPAE and or the ZBA for advice as to whether or not aloofs completed installations will in operation conform or are conforming to the performance standards and as prescribed in the following conditions number three and four. Three, aloofs initial and continued compliance with the performance standards shall include the following inspections and or testing on site while installations are in operation by OBSPAE and or the town retained expert consultants to the extent, type, and or degree that OBSPAE and or the town's expert consultants deem necessary, end quote. OBSPAE's February 1628 report to the ZBA also set forth, quote, personal observations of OBSPAE staff, end quote, covering the period of November 20, 2017 through February 1, 2018, which in summary form the factual bases for OBSPAE's determination, decision, and or interpretation as a result of OBSPAE's investigations that the aforesaid open quote, facts, information, circumstances, occurrences, in incidents, and or situations constitute and or establish reasonable grounds to believe that violations of the Orangetown Zoning Code's performance standards as prescribed in decision number 17-31 have been committed by aloof, end quote. A full copy of said personal observations of OBSPAE staff is contained within OBSPAE's February 1628 report to the ZBA, which may be viewed and or copies obtained for a fee at OBSPAE's offices during regular business hours. And it concludes, all persons interested in OBSPAE's foregoing application to the ZBA are entitled to be heard at the public hearing. The complete application may be inspected at the Office of Building Zoning Planning Administration and Enforcement, OBSPAE, 20 South Greenbush Road, Orangeburg, New York, 10962, during regular business hours, and copies may be made upon request for a fee. Debbie, have all... Public notices required by state and local law have been complied with. 
On that note, there was an objection a uh, letter that was submitted, and we'll read the letter in full at the appropriate juncture from Aloof's or one of Aloof's attorneys, Siv Paget and Riesel, dated March 26, 2018, indicating that Aloof received its notice by way of uh, being sent to Donald Brenner, who's an attorney in Tapan, who has been on record as most recently as this uh, past week or so, last time uh, that they were in court, um, not this past week, maybe the week before, uh, Donald Brenner is representing API Industries DBA Aloof Plastics, maybe not on this particular specific matter, but on many other matters. Uh, whether or not that notice is defective with regards to Aloof Plastics only, I draw this board to Orangetown Zoning Code section 10.332 paragraph B which reads, in substance, only one sentence I'll read that's pertinent to this, and that is, open quote, failure of a property owner whose name appears on the affidavit of property owners to receive the notice shall not affect the validity of the public hearing or any action taken thereat by the board, end quote. Again, that's Orangetown Zoning Code, section 10.332, B as in boy. That paragraph is very lengthy, references the neighbor notices that we're talking about and those public notices have to be sent to all those neighbors abutting the subject property and those within 200 feet, and there's also some other in, uh, notice requirements in there. And as I read in that sentence, the failure of any one of those neighbors in this situation, I guess that would also include aloof, uh, to receive one of those notices shall not invalidate any action taken by this board. So I'm, I'm comfortable with you proceeding with the public hearing. Correspondence. Yeah. I'm going to take a sip. I shall recite the correspondence that has been received by the board with regard to this application. The first is the. Well, I think it. I think it would be a good idea to read the February 16, 2018, building department's report to you. So we have the, uh, the February 16, 28 report from the Office of Building Zoning Planning Administration Enforcement of Orangetown. That is the subject of the notice of public hearing that was read into the record a few minutes ago. And it reads in full, the, re the array, the regarding is implement implementation of specific condition four of the May 11, 2017 ZBA decision 17-31 regarding the performance standards application of API Industries, Inc., DBA Aloof Plastics, also known as a loo for premises located to Glenshaw Street, Orangeburg, the premises. This report is being submitted to the ZBA as per, as per specific condition four of decision 1731, which specific condition four states, open quote, Demi under Ospay shall investigate any alleged violation of performance standards by the applicant. And if there are reasonable grounds to believe that a violation exists, Demi under Ospay shall notify the ZBA of the occurrence or existence of a probable violation thereof, and the ZBA shall investigate the alleged violation, and for such investigation may employ qualified expert consultants. And if after holding public hearing on due notice, including notice of the applicant, except for posting of signs at the subject site, which signs shall not be required, the fees for which public hearing shall be paid for the applicant, the ZBA finds that a violation occurred or exists, the ZBA may revoke and rescind this approval decision and any building permit and or certificate of op occupancy that has been issued based upon this approval decision shall also be, be deemed revoked and rescinded, which shall be in addition to any other legal remedies that the town may pursue, end quote. The ZBA should also note specific conditions 2 and 3B of decision 17-31, which specific conditions 2 and 3B state. Two, open quote two, pursuant to Orangetown Zoning Code sections 4.13, section 10.334C, and section 10.335, initial and continued compliance with performance standards shall be required, and any building permit or certificate op occupancy shall be conditioned on, among other things, the applicant's completed installations in operation conforming to the performance standards and the applicant's paying of the fees to the town for services of the town's own expert consultant or consultants deemed reasonable and necessary by the Orangetown Department of Environmental Management and Engineering, DEMI, the Orangetown Office of Building, Zoning, and Planning Administration and Enforcement, OBSPE, and or the ZBA for advice as to whether or not the applicant's completed installations will in operation conform or, or are conforming to the performance standards and as prescribed in the following conditions three and four. Three, the applicant's initial and continued compliance with the performance standards shall include the following. Inspections and or testing on site while installations are in operation by OBSPE, DEMI, and or the town retained expert consultants to the extent, type, and or degree that OBSPE, DEMI, and or the town's expert consultants deem necessary, end quote. Personal observation of OBSPE staff. On November 20, 2017, Anthony Lawson, PMP, Corporate Engineering Manager of Aloof, 
advised OBSPE via email that the new system subject of decision 17-31 was in full operation. On December 7, 2017, Anthony Lawson, PMP, Corporate Engineering Manager of Aloof, advised OBSPE via email that all wall openings at the premises were closed. On December 8, 2017, Michael Manzari, Building Inspector of OBSPE, along with two New York State Department Environmental Conservation Inspectors, performed a site inspection at the premises of the exterior only due to them having been denied access to the interior of the premises. A summary of his December 8, 2017 inspection is set forth below. One, vent openings on the side of the building are still open vents, which do not contain a filter system or mechanical operation, so air is freely, freely flowing in and out of these openings. Two, a strong perfume and plastic smells emanating from these locations. Three, roof inspections show that all inlet fans were in operation. Four, a strong perfume and plastic smell is still being released from the newly installed rooftop units. Five, access to the interior of the premises to examine the filters installed was requested, which request, was, which request for access was denied by Aloof. On January 16, 2018, Jane Slavin, RA, Director of OBSPE, requested approval from Aloof for the town's own expert consultant to perform testing at the premises to determine whether or not Aloof's completed installations while in full operation conform or are conforming to the performance standards and decision 17-31, which testing by an expert consultant was deemed necessary by Director Slavin. On February 1, 2018, Building Inspector Manzari performed another site inspection at the premises to determine completion of Aloof's installations as per decision 17-31 and permit number 46264. A summary of this February 1, 28, 2018 inspection is set forth below. One, one of the new air filter units located, of the re located over the rep repro, repro room was not operational. Two, a large number of unused vent stacks, roof fans, vents, and ducts still remain open. Three, installation of equipment under permit 46140 is not per approved plans. It is the determination, decision, and or interpretation of OBSPE that the foregoing facts, information, circumstances, occurrences, incidents, and or situations which were personally observed by Building Inspector Manzari and or Director Slavin via their aforesaid investigations constitute and or establish reasonable grounds to believe that violations of the Orangetown Zoning Code's performance, and performance standards as prescribed in Decision 17-31 have been committed by LOOF. Next is correspondence... Uh, also from OBZPAE, it's dated March 26, 2018, and the regarding or Ray states, update to letter submitted on February 16, 2018 in reference to the ZBA decision 17-31 regarding the performance standards application of API Industries DBA aloof plastics or aloof for premises located at 2 Glenshaw Street, Orangeburg, the premises. Personal observations of OBS Ob space staff of odors. Ele November 7, 2017, Tuesday, 10 a.m. During inspection of property line from the rails to trails location, a strong smell of burning plastic and per perfume. November 13, 2017, Monday, 10 a.m. Corner of Mountain View Avenue and Batan Road, strong smell of burning, burning plastic and perfume. December 8, 2017, Friday, 10 a.m. Inspection with DEC. Inspection of stream on the east side of the railroad track, strong smell of burning plastic and perf perfume. December 19, 2018, Tuesday, 4 p.m., Jane Slavin, director, detected a strong perfume smell on East Erie Street between Route 303 and Greenbush Road. March 1, 2018, Thursday, 10 a.m., meeting with TRC at site, southwest end of property, strong smell of burning plastic and perfume. March 19, 2018, Monday, site visit with TRC, Jane, Jane Slavin, director, Mike Manzari, inspector, and Dave Maj Majewski, Inspector all observed the strong plastic, strong burning plastic smell and perfume smell while on tour with Anthony Lawson. Same odors were detected outside of the main entrance at 12.45 p.m. while leaving meeting. March 20, 2018, Tuesday, 9.45 p.m., Jane Slavin, director, observed the same burning plastic perfume odors outside of the town hall main entrance after the town board meeting. Personal observation, observations of DE, DEC staff of odors. December, December 5, 2018, Tuesday, November... Tuesday, 11.15 a.m., response to complaint, intersection of South Moisson and Hay Street detected a pungent lemon fragrance. Afterwards, DEC conducted a walkthrough at Aloof, and they were running lemon fragrance, which matched the odor. The new filters that are utilized before exhausting repro room appeared to be dirty and black. Upon inspection of the roof, the odor was detected coming from the exhaust fans above the repro room and above the room where the fragrance was being used. The odor was also very strong by the right side of the building, leading to the visitor's entrance. December 8, 2017, Friday, 10 a.m., site inspection with Mike Manzari. Observed some vents were releasing unfiltered air, which gave off an odor on the roof and along the sides of the building. 
January 12, 2018, Friday, 10 a.m. Responses to complaint, odors were detected on Moisson Street between Arthur Street and Hay Street. There are two vents on top of where the DEC smelt an odor, matching the odors they detect when responding to complaints. Anthony Lawson stated that the odor was not from the fragrance line because they hadn't, hadn't fanned fragrance since the day before at 6 a.m., so that smell was from the repro line. DEC indicated that every time they respond to complaints at, at Aloof, it is it is fairly clear that the odors detected in Orangeburg are due to aloof operations. January 23rd, 2018, Tuesday, 12 p.m. Response to complaint, DEC inspector noticed the same odors found coming out of the vents of the repro room along Moisson Street. Along and around Moisson Street seems to be the key areas that get hit with the odors. DEC did notice the odor on one side of the neighboring building, downwind of the vent above the repro room. DEC inspector described odor as a sweet, soapy smell. February 16, 2018, Friday, 7 a.m. It seems that there were some odors going over Route 303. There were occasional brief moments of the same odor DEC noticed coming out of the roof fence above the repro line along Route 303. It seemed to have extended between East Erie Street and the Orangetown Animal Hospital. March 1, 2018, Thursday, 12 p.m. DEC noticed the faint odors that they know from Aloof along Mooring Drive. DEC <coughs> drove around Aloof and noticed a strong odor upon leaving. Summary of site visit on March 1, 2018 with TRC and Mike Manzari. Additional possible sources of release points of odor. A, four wall fans above the high density production area. B, six wall fans above the low density production area. C, four wall fans in the high bay area over the commercial production area. D, two blowers located on the roof line above the commercial production area. E, four roof vents located in the flat portion of the roof. Fresh air intake for stack on southeast corner was capped and open to the outside. High density room currently does not have any exhaust stacks, only open unfiltered vents. High bay vent over the commercial area. Strong smell of perfume, even though production was not fully operational. Newly installed building filtered exhaust over repro room. Only one unit was operational and filters were black and a strong smell of burning plastic. Two vents on southeast section of building that were previously non-operational were in operation. A strong smell of burning plastic was detected. And that's uh, signed. March 27, 2018, by Jane Slavin and Michael Manzari. Next is from the De Orangetown Department of Environment, Environmental Management and Engineering. It's dated March 19, 2018. It's signed by Joseph J. Joseph J. Moran, PE Commissioner. And the subject is D Demi comments for ZBA meeting on March 21, 2018. Review of plans, implementation, implementation of specific conditions of ZBA 17-31 decision regarding API Industries, Inc. DBA aloof plastics. This is to inform the ZBA of the latest state of affairs regarding the aloof plastics facility and to reiterate the conditions of the performance standards review letter dated May 3rd, 2017. The Ops Bay Director Jane Slavin, RA, sent a memo to the ZBA describing and enumerating conditions at the aloof facility that do not comply with the ZBA number 17-31 17, 17-31 decision regarding performance standards review, specifically condition four. Additionally, the applicant is obligated to certify that the installation of the proposed systems and improvements be certified for conformance with the town's performance standards upon installation and testing of the system in accordance with the DEMI performance standards review letter dated May 3, 2017. This certification has not been received. I recommend that the ZBA exercise any given authority over this applicant to achieve compliance with the ZBA 17-31 decision, performance standards, and the Orangetown Town Code. Next is a memorandum from Michael B. Bettman, Chief Fire Inspector, Town of Orangetown, regarding aloof environmental controls. My comments of May 1, 2017 have not been answered and attached to Ms. Chief Fire Inspector Bettman's March 7, 2018 memo is a, his memo of May 1, 2017, and it reads, performance standards, one, will the flexible duct supplying the makeup air interfere with fire sprinkler coverage? Two, it is general practice that makeup air systems shut down upon fire or water flow alarms. Has this been considered by an engineer? Three, provide flame spread rating for flexible duct. Four, this building consists of steel roof trusses. Are they capable of supporting the rooftop makeup air units? Five. Page three of the resume of operations, fire prevention supplement does not list the inks, waste oil, new oil, acetylene, et cetera, on site. The next is uh, from the Department of Environmental Management Engineering, town of Orangetown, and I believe this has to do with the New York State General Municipal Law 239-M notice and perhaps the notice of intention I don't think we are, it's not, it's not subject to secret. Okay, so there's really no substantive comments in this. We also received uh, a similar 
formatted document from the Rock County Highway Department dated March 21, 2018. Sorry, the previous one from Joseph Rand Demi was dated March 19, 2018. Again, no, no substance. Was that just his cover? Was that just Joe Moran's cover transmittal? Yeah, they, they saying no comments. Yes, they checked off no comments at this time. Please send future correspondence for review. Next is a similar, similarly formatted correspondence from the Rock County Health Department dated March 20, 2018, and it checked off no comments at this time. Please send future, future correspondence for review. The next is a letter from the attorneys for Aloof Plastics. It's signed by Stephen with a V as in Victor, Barshoff, spelled B as in boy, A-R-S-H-O-V as in Victor, of C Civ, Paget and Reisel. Do you have a spelling on that, Anne-Marie? Okay. It's dated March 26, 2018. It is four pages long. I'm going to read it very quickly. It's part of the record. Anyone may uh, obtain a copy if they wish or view a copy. And it's regarding this public hearing. As you know, Civ, Paget and Reisel represents API Industries, Inc., DBA, Aloof Plastics, here and after aloof, I write to inform you that the process undertaken to date by the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Orangetown, the ZBA, and by Director Slavin in connection with the notice of public hearing commencing enforcement proceedings against aloof violates aloof's constitutionally protected right to due process of law. The ZBA has scheduled a public hearing at which Director Slavin will present OBSPAY's allegation that aloof is in violation of the town's performance standards. As detailed below, the ZBA and Director Slavin have commenced an enforcement proceeding without providing Aloof with proper notice for the hearing or an adequate opportunity to be heard. In, in addition, the ZBA and Director Slavin have failed to abide by and follow mandatory enforcement procedures as set forth in the town, co in the town code and in ZBA Resolution 17-31 dated May 11, 2017. Specifically, these actions and omissions deprive Aloof of its right to be fully heard at a fair hearing when faced with the threat of deprivation of its valuable property interest and the continued operation of its facility. The following are some of the more egregious due process violations committed by the ZBA and Director Slavin. Neither the ZBA nor Director Slavin delivered the notice of public hearing to Aloof, thereby preventing Aloof from having sufficient time before the scheduled public hearing to generate the detailed technical responses required to properly defend its property interest in its, in its approvals. Neither the ZBA nor Director Slavin included in the notice of public hearing the information needed to inform Aloof of the nature of the alleged violations, thereby preventing Aloof from preparing a response either by pre-hearing submissions or a presentation at the public hearing. The ZBA Director Slavin and other town officials or employees obstructed and delayed delivery to Aloof of Director Slavin's report by refusing to provide a copy of the report to Aloof, requiring that Aloof submit a request for the report under the Freedom of Information Law FOIL and releasing the report less than 48 hours before the originally scheduled public hearing date only after Director Slavin specially authorized its release. The ZBA Director Slavin and, um, I'm sorry, the ZBA Director Slavin and other town officials informed Aloof that its participation at the public hearing would be limited to the amount of time afforded to indiv individuals from the general public, a total of merely three minutes. Just for the record, I've been reading so quickly, it sounded like I was saying the ZBA Director Slavin. She's not the director of the ZBA, she's the director of OBSPAY. <laughs> Factual background, unbeknownst to Aloof, until a few days ago, Director Slavin submitted a report to the ZBA on or about February 16, 2018, the Slavin report purportedly asserting that Aloof has been operating in violation of applicable performance standards. No copy was provided to Aloof, nor was Aloof approached by Director Slavin so that Aloof could respond to the contents of the report. There is no indication that the ZBA engaged in any investigation of the matters raised in the Slavin report, which it is obligated to undertake prior to calling an enforcement public hearing per specific condition number four of the May 11, 2017 ZBA resolution. Instead, on or about March 8, 2018, the Zoning Board of Appeals sent the notice of public hearing to Donald Brenner, Esquire, an attorney who has represented Aloof in the past. The town's procedures for enforcement proceedings require that notices be served directly to the subject of the enforcement action or its registered agent. Mr. Brenner is not a registered agent of Aloof. Therefore, no one at the town ever properly served the notice of public hearing upon Aloof. This notice, which was not received by Aloof from Mr. Brenner until March 15, 2018, did not include on its face nor did it attach any information explaining the nature of the alleged violation or violations that supposedly form the predicate for the public hearing. The notice merely makes reference to the Slavin report without characterizing or summarizing its, summarizing its contents 
or attaching the slave and report. Instead of giving aloof notice of the violations it purportedly committed and the supporting basis for such allegations, the notice merely, merely states that the slave and report is av available at Town Hall for public inspection and copying. Once made aware of the existence of the notice of public hearing in the report on March 15, 2018, Aloof attempted to ins inspect the slave and report and to obtain a copy of the slave and report from the town. Even though Aloof is the subject of the slave and report and is constitutionally entitled to be provided a copy, town officials refused to let Aloof, Aloof either view the report or make a copy and instead required Aloof to submit a FOIL request. Even though the notice of public hearing itself stated that the slave and report would be available for inspection and copying at Town Hall from March 15, through March 20, 2018, town officials refused to re release the Slavin report until special permission was granted by Director Slavin. Consequently, Aloof was not able to obtain a copy of the Slavin report until the morning of March 20, 2018, less than 48 hours prior to, prior to the originally scheduled March 21, 2018 Z ZBA public hearing. The notice of public hearing notes that the slave report alleges Aloof committed violations of the Orange Town Zoning Code performance standards. However, the notice does not specify what these alleged violations are, which standards were allegedly violated, or on what dates the violations allegedly occurred. Instead, the notice of public hearing generally references the conditions contained in ZBA Decision 1731, which approved Aloof's application 1731. The notice does not reference the specific town code provisions establishing the performance standards which, with which OBS Bay apparently suspects Aloof is not in compliance. Town Code Section 4.1 establishes performance standards for numerous and distinct elements such, such as fire and explosion hazards, Section 4.161, radioactivity or electrical disturbance, Section 4.162, smoke, Section 4.163, fly ash, dust, fumes, vapors, gases, and other forms of air pollution, Section 4.164, liquid or solid wastes, Section 4.165, violations Section 4.171, noise, section 4.181, odors, section 4.182, and glare, section 4.183. Finally, in March 20, 2018, Aloof attempted to ascertain what opportunity it would have at the public hearing to refute the charges set forth in the Slavin report. Aloof was informed by the town that Aloof would be treated identically to the way members of the general public would be treated. Aloof would be afforded a three-minute time slot to present its statement, including any detailed technical material necessar necessary to refute the allegations in the Slavin report. Aloof has a constitutionally guaranteed right to procedural due process. The foregoing are an apparent deliberate series of actions with one obvious purpose, to deprive Aloof of its due process rights and to preordain the revocation of Aloof's permits. These are neither minor technicalities nor isolated incidents. The pattern of delays and obstacles demonstrate that the town officials acted with intent, not out of ignorance of the law. The right to procedural due process granted under the 5th and 14th Amendments to the U.S. Constitution mandates open quote, that a depri deprivation of life, liberty, or property be preceded by notice and opportunity for hearing appropriate to the nature of the case, end quote. And there are two case law judicial opinions cited in the letter. At bare minimum, procedural due process requires adequate notice and a fair hearing to be followed by a written explanation. And there is, a, again, a case law judicial decision cited in the letter. The amount of protection required to satisfy Procedural due process, open quote, depends upon the nature of the issues and the relevant weight of the Matthews factor. And there's, a, again, cite, citation to a judicial decision, case law opinion. And the Matthews factors are, open quote, one, the private interest that will be affected by the official action, two, the risk of an erroneous deprivation of such interest through the procedures used, and the probable value, if any, of additional or substitute procedural safeguards, and three, the government's interest, including the function involved and the fiscal and administrative burdens that the additional or substitute requirements would entail, end quote. And that is a quotation from the cited case. The permits that are the subject of the enforcement action that was in initiated by the notice of public hearing relate to equipment that was installed at Aloof's facilities at great expense to Aloof. The New York State Department of Environmental Conservation has directed Aloof to operate this equipment at all, at all times that its industrial processes are in operation. Therefore, the threatened revocation of the permits or the determination to prevent issuance of the certificate of occupancy related to the permit go to the heart of Aloof's ability to continue to operate. Thus, applying the Matthews factors, there is a substantial risk to Aloof's valuable property interest in the continued operation of its facility as weighed against the minimal administrative burden that would be imposed by informing Aloof as to the actual sections of the code it is allegedly in violation of, granting Aloof a reasonable amount of time to form a detailed and technical response, and allowing Aloof the time at the public hearing to fully present all relevant evidence to the ZBA. Conclusion, the town must follow its own procedures. The ZBA must investigate the slave and report allegations prior to conducting a public hearing. Part of the investigation must be delivery 
of the Slavin report to Aloof and providing Aloof an opportunity during the course of that investigation to refute its claims. If, if after investigation the ZBA determines that there is a reasonable basis to, to conclude that Aloof operated in violation of the performance standards, then it may call for a public hearing. Aloof itself must be given notice of that public hearing, including the specific charges and claim violations. Aloof must be afforded reasonable time to prepare its defense and must be afforded a fair and reasonable opportunity to refute the charges against it. The foregoing is the process that Aloof is due. Failure to provide it will force Aloof to exhaust its legal remedies, including seeking redress from the courts. That's it for correspondence and reports. Um, from a procedural standpoint, I believe this is the proper procedure because, as you know, and as mandated by state law and under our own local law, this board, as a public body, can only function as a body in a public hearing. That's, that is your only jurisdictional, that's the only jurisdictional ability you have to function as a municipal land use board, as a zoning board of appeals. So in order for you to find that there's reasonable cause to believe that a violation exists and to initiate an investigation, you have to do it as a body. You can't meet in Hogan's, you can't meet at the new Orangetown Diner. And that's no disrespect to any other food service facilities in the town of Orangetown. You have to do it at a public hearing. So you may proceed. Okay. And, <clears throat> and so ju just to clarify, the main decision we're making tonight is in agreement with the, with the loose attorneys. We agree that an investigation has not taken place and that we need to sit here tonight an as a board to allow the building department to investigate. Well, at this point, uh, the there has been an in initiation of an investigation by OBSPAY, and following the procedures in the ZBA decision 1731, which actually mirror the, perform the existing performance standards procedures with, so with some modifications, uh, they report, OBSPAY reports to you that they, they believe, OBSPAY believes that there's reasonable grounds or reasonable bases to believe that there's probable cause, whatever, that a violation or violations exist. And then you, the investigation now carries on by the ZBA. Great. So it's now your investigation. Thank you. All right, Jane, Mike, please raise your hands. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. Great, thank you. Good evening, members of the board. After that long-winded <laughs> introductions of letters, some of the stuff I may repeat that Dennis Michaels has already read into the record, so forgive me if I repeat anything that he's already taken care of. In my presentation to the town board on December 19th, 2017, I provided a summary of an inspection performed on December 8th, 2017 by Mike Manzari, inspector, and two inspectors from DEC. The results of the inspection of the exterior and the roof on December 8th, 2017, were that there were vent openings on the side of the building that were still just open vents. It seems that these did not contain filter system or mechanical operation, so it was just air exiting the building freely. There was a strong perfume and plastic smell emanating from these locations. All inlet fans located on the roof were in operation. The new mechanical equipment that was installed was running and a strong perfume and plastic smell was be detected being released from the new units. There was a large chiller on the side of the building which was discharging water and what looks like small plastic pellets into the creek. The inspectors requested access to the interior to examine the filters installed. However, this access was denied. <clears throat> On December 11th, our office received a copy of the roof plan as requested. There were 31 vents indicated on the roof plan. We were told that all are in operation. However, during site inspections, Mr. Renzari indicated that he can see clear down into the factory. There are five stacks indicated on the plan which are governed by the DEC air permit. This was the plan that was presented to the board uh, for the approval. There are 12 wall-mounted exhaust fans located on the machinery high bay units on the roof that do not have any type of filtration. There are six wall-mounted exhaust fans located on the exterior walls that do not have any type of filtration. 
and an additional three that have been closed up. Item number 14 of the performance standards, resume of operations, applicants are to indicate on plan the chimneys, vents, exhaust openings, and equipment they serve, as well as unvented operations that might release any air pollution to the outside atmosphere. Aloof's application indicated no air pollution will be released to outside atmosphere. Addition of building ventilation systems and carbon filtration will dilute potentially ambient building exhaust emissions <coughs> to below the odor thresholds. At the ZBA hearing on May 11th, the attorney representing Aloof stated that diluting below odor thresholds and added filtration will no longer smell outside of the plant. The building ventilation system as proposed on March 14th, 2017, is again the drawing you're seeing up on the screen, that was submitted by Aloof and the ZBA indicates a more dilute stream will, the report itself issues a more dilute stream will be insurance against odor issues being emitted from the building. Per our last inspection, the strong perfume and plastic smell was still being emitted from the building. Per the ZBA performance standards, condition number three, the applicant's initial and continued compliance with the performance standard shall include the following. Installation completed within eight weeks of issuance of permit. That was not completed in time. Inspections and or testing on the site while in installations are in operation by OBSPE or DEME or the town's expert as deemed necessary. Condition number four, DEME and OBSPE shall investigate any alleged violation of performance standards and if a violation, violation exists, shall notify the ZBA of the occurrence or existence of a probable violation thereof. Due to these findings, I advise the town board that OBSFE would be moving forward with notifying the ZBA of our findings. The February 16th report was submitted to the ZBA by OBSFE feels that there are reasonable grounds to believe a violation <coughs> of the ZBA decision exists. As per specific condition number four of decision 17-31, which spe specific condition four states, DEME or OBSFE shall investigate any alleged violation of performance standards by the applicant. And if there are reasonable grounds to believe that violation exists, OBSFE shall notify the ZBA of the occurrence or existence of a probable violation thereof. And the ZBA shall investigate the alleged violation. And for such investigation may employ qualified expert consultants, and if after holding a public hearing on due notice, include notice to the applicant, except for the postings of the signs at the site. The fees for which public hearing shall be paid for the applicant. The ZBA finds that a violation occurs or exists. The ZBA may revoke or rescind the approval decision and any building permit and or CFO that has been issued. Based upon the approval decision shall be deemed revoked or rescinded, which shall be in addition to other legal remedies the town may pursue. The ZBA should also note specific condition number two and three B of decision 17-31, which specific conditions are. Number two, pursuant to Orange Town Zoning Code 4.13, 10.33, and 10.335, initial and continued compliance of the performance standard shall be required and any building permit or CFO issued shall be conditioned on, among other things, the applicant's completed installations in operation conforming to the performance standards and the applicant's paying of the fees towns to the town for services of the town's own expert consultant or consultants deemed reasonable and necessary by the OBSPE and DEME. And or the ZBA for advice as to whether or not the applicant's completed installations will, in operation, conform or are conforming to the performance standards as described in conditions three and four. The applicant's initial and continued compliance with the performance standards shall include the following inspections and or testing on site while installations are in full operation by OBZ, PA, DME, and or the town retained expert consultants to the extent, type, and or degree that OSBE, DEM, or the town's consultants deemed necessary. Personal observations of OBC staff, a lot of these were read in already, so I'll abbreviate, but odors were noticed on November 20th, December 7th, and December 8th. Uh, Anthony Lawson on December 7th 
via email said all of the wall openings were closed. That was found not to be true. December 8th, Michael Manzari, building inspector, along with two DEC inspectors, perform a site inspection at the, premise, the premises of the exterior only due to them having been denied access to the interior. Vent openings on the side of the building were still open, which do not contain a filter system or mechanical operation, so air is freely flowing. A strong perfume and plastic smell is emanating from these locations. Roof inspection showed that all inlet fans were in operation. A strong perfume <coughs> and plastic smell was still being released from the newly installed rooftop units. Access was denied, as mentioned earlier, uh, for interior examination of the filters that were installed. On January 16th, I, Director of OBZ, PAE, requested approval from ALOOF for the town's own expert consultant, TRC, to perform testing at the premises to determine whether or not ALOOF's completed installations, while in full operation, conform or are conforming to the performance standards and the decision 17-31. On January 23rd, 2018, Anthony Lawson, via email, advised me that access will not be granted to TRC. some photos. On February 1st, 2018, Mr. Manzari, the building inspector, performed another site inspection at the premises to determine, again, completion of Aloof's installation. A summary of this is below. One of the new air filter units located in the repro room was not operational. A large number of unused vent stacks, roof fans, vents, and ducts still remain open. Installation of equipment under a separate permit, 46140, was not installed per the approved plans. So in your packet was a number of sheets that show this, this unit here, which is part of the approved units to be installed per ZBA 17-31, was actually a part on the roof and was not in operation. This unit to the right was in operation. Four new fresh air intakes installed as part of the permitted scope of work. You'll see them. They're a bit shinier than the other pieces. Here's a very large exhaust system located above the scented bag area. Four unfiltered exhaust openings. A scented odor was being admitted at the time of inspection, as observed by Mr. Manzari. Unfiltered wall vents, some non-operational, open vent pipes open vent pipes, and this right here, which is a little hard to see, but it's actually just a hole in the side of the building. Probably a previous vent pipe that was re removed and the hole was never closed. Unfiltered openings with broken fins. Some are non-operational. These are banded vents. Some are actually damaged, and they are not closed up. Some more examples of abandoned vents and flue pipes. This is how one of the stack pipes was closed with a plastic bag. These are just abandoned. This is a, a man, so you can see how large these stacks actually are. Again, abandoned pipes that are damaged. This is an aban some type of aban uh, yeah, abandoned AC, AC unit, an open wall vent, again, with no, no fan or no filtration system. Ultimately, access to TRC was granted after a meeting between Supervisor Day and Susan Rosenberg. The letter that we submitted today outlines the following odor observations, personal observations made by the OBZ PAE staff, starting back from November 7th, 2017 at 10 a.m. During inspection of the property line from the rails to trails lo location, a strong smell of burning plastic and perfume. November 11th, 2017, it's a Monday, 10 a.m. Corner of Mountain View Avenue and Batan Road, strong smell of burning plastic and perfume. December 8th, 2017, Friday, 10 a.m. Inspection with DEC, Inspection of stream on the east side of the railroad tracks, strong smell of burning plastic and perfume at time of inspection. 12-19-18, uh, 2017, excuse me. 
Tuesday, 4 p.m., Jane Slavin director detected a strong perfume smell on East Erie Street between Route 303 and Greenbush Road. March 1st, 2018, Thursday, 10 a.m., meeting with TRC at site, southwest end of the property, strong smell of burning plastic and perfume. 319, 2018, Monday, we conducted a site visit with TRC, myself, Mike Manzari, and Dave Majeski, where we had a tour of the entire facility with Anthony Lawson. The same odors were detected, well, we, there was an odor of burning plastic smell and perfume while in the plant, which noticeably made my eyes water and my throat a bit scratchy. So we went outside. We, same odors were detected outside of the main entrance at 12.45 p.m. while we were concluding our site visit. The following day, March 20th, 2018, which is a Tuesday evening at 9.45 p.m., when I left this meeting room and went out to my car at the front of town hall, I could detect the same smell. Personal observations that come from the DEC's reports that were submitted to us last week. 12.5, 2017, Tuesday, 11.15 a.m., response to complaint, intersection of South Moisson and Hayes Street, detected a pungent lemon fragrance. Afterwards, DEC conducted a walkthrough at Aloof, and they were running lemon fragrance, which matched the odor. The new filters that were utilized before exhausting repo room appeared to be dirty and black. Upon inspection of the roof, the odor was detected coming from the exhaust fans above the repo room and above the room where the fragrance was being used. The odor was also very strong on the right side of the building, leading to the visitor's entrance. 12-8-2017, 2017 Friday, 10 a.m., site inspection with Mike Manzari. Observed some vents were releasing unfiltered air, which gave off an odor on the roof and along sides of the building. January 12, 2018. Friday, 10 a.m., a response to a complaint. Odors were detected on Moisson Street between Arthur Street and Hayes Street. There are two vents on top of the building where the DEC smelt and odor matching the odors they detected when responding to complaints. Anthony Lawson stated the owner was not from the fragrance line because they, had, they hadn't ran fragrance, fragrance since the day before at 6 a.m. So that smell was from the repro line. DEC indicated that every time they respond to complaints at Aloof, it is fairly clear that the odors detected in Orangeburg area are due to the Aloof operations. January 23, 2018, Tuesday, 12 p.m., response to complaint. DEC inspector noticed the same odors found coming out of the vents of the repro room along Moisson Street. Al along and around Moisson Street seems to be the key areas that get hit with the odors. DEC did notice the odor on one side of the neighboring building, downwind of the vent above the repro room. DEC inspector described the odor as a sweet, soapy smell. February 16, 2018, Friday, 7 a.m. It seems that there were some odor, odors reported going over Route 303. There were occasional brief moments of the same odor DEC noticed coming out of the roof vents above the repro line along Route 303. It seemed to have extended between East Erie Street and the Orangetown Animal Hospital on 303. March 1st, 2018, Thursday, 12 p.m., DEC noticed the faint odors that they know from Aloof along Mo Ring Drive. DEC drove around Aloof and noticed a strong odor upon leaving. Let me pass these before you do this. Per Chapter 43, Section 4.11, Performance Standards, no land or building shall be used or occupied in a manner as to create any noxious or otherwise objectionable odor in a matter or amount as to adversely affect the surrounding area. It is the determina determination of OBZPAE that the foregoing facts, information, circumstances, and occurrences, which were personally observed by the building inspector, Mr. Manzari, Director Slavin, and the DEC via their ad, um, aforesaid investigations constitute and or establish reasonable grounds to believe that violations of the Orangetown Zoning Code performance standards as prescribed, as prescribed in decision 17-31 have been committed by ALOOF. We ask that the board consider approving the town's hiring of an independent mechanical engineer with experience in design and inspection of the systems required to help reduce the odors and hopefully therefore reduce the complaints.
all I have. Thank you. And now, uh, do you have a recommendation on who that consultant may be? We're obtaining a list of, of three engineers, which I have not compiled yet. I will email okay. the board when it is received. Any questions on the board? Well, it seems pretty straightforward to me. How, how soon do you think you'll have that proposed? Hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. Because uh, the ZBA procedurally, it, you're you're going to be doing the uh, engaging of the expert consultant, so it would need to be done at, a, at an open public meeting. Um, we'll have a meeting on April was it fourth or April yeah. four. four. So yeah. just for that purpose, just taking a step at a time. I think we have to determine understood consultants, engineers, timing, and all that. So understood. Yeah, they can hear. But I hear my time. Yeah. Th Thank you. All right. Thought that might be might be a, a gift to you in attendance to not hear me. <laughs> what I said was that you did not hear was that the board will be engaging the ZBA will be engaging the expert consultant. So that needs to be done at a public meeting. That's all. Um, because at, at this point, we, really, we have to determine who that expert is, get the expert report before we move forward. We don't have enough evidence really to move forward on any other decision with aloof. The sole purpose of this meeting is really to identify and get additional evidence or... To investigate. To investigate, I guess, the, these complaints or uh, comments. Right, so I mean, it's not until we receive those reports from those engineers or consultants that we can move forward. Would you agree? Well, uh, yeah, uh, yes, but but ask yourselves this question: based upon the information, and you haven't heard from anyone else yet, in particular aloof, but based upon the information that you have in your possession now, the testimony that you've heard from Ms. Slavin and perhaps from aloof plastics, um, do you feel that without your own expert consultant in <coughs> conducting an investigation and reporting back to you. Do you feel that you have enough information this evening to make a decision on this application? No. Personally, as one member of the board, I do not. Um, if other members of the board wish to speak up about it, um, we'll let you take it from there. Just a question. Uh, we have specific conditions and general conditions of our decision last May. And just taking a look at these, I, I can't see how they're following these specific conditions. Uh, the time, um, the answer to the fire chief, uh, the uh, officer of fire, fire inspector, uh, Mike Bettman. Installations shall be completed within eight weeks. Are the installations totally completed? They were talking about that, capping off ductwork. Uh, That's not, not well, capping. According to Ms. Slavin, the they answer would be no, but I believe Aloof Plastics may or may not agree with that. So that would be a question that you might want to ask Aloof Plastics. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I did, going through the records, find a letter that was submitted by API Industries on May 11, 2017, and it's noted submitted to the ZBA uh, addressed to Mr. Giordello, who was the acting director at the time. And he does respond to these questions. I just don't think it was ever sent to the, Mr. Batman. Okay. But so there was a response. So I there was a response to those questions. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Jane, if I may. That's Jane Slavin. <laughs> you mentioned, uh, you made reference to the DEC's own report or findings. Um, is, is there any written documentation to that effect? Did you want to submit that and make it part of the record? read this into the record. I'm not going to read the, I'm just going to reference the, the documents for the record. Uh, notice of inspection results from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation here and after DEC dated December 5, 2017. Thank you for highlighting the date, Jane. 
And that's one page. Next is a DEC notice of inspection results dated December 8, 2017. One page, I'm sorry, and the first document was uh, submitted by Andrew P. Chin of the DEC. The second one was submitted by an Al Alyssa Carbone of the DEC. Third one, again, DEC's notice of inspection results, one page, dated January 12, 2018, submitted by Andrew P. Chin. The next DEC notice of inspection results dated January 22, 2018, submitted by Al Alyssa Carbone of the DEC. Next is the DEC's notice of inspection results dated January 23, 2018, submitted by Alyssa Carbone of the DEC. DEC's notice of inspection results dated February 16, 2018, submitted by Andrew P. Chin of the DEC. And the DEC's notice, notice of inspection results dated March 1, 2018, Submitted by Alyssa Carbone of the DC, all one page. I have a question. Were those results summarizing what you read to us? They're not results. They're actually Just inspection reports. There, well, there was uh, reports okay. reflected in what you read to us. That's correct. That those is, are the okay. DEC's observations, and the reports were received from um, the DEC's attorney via okay. email. Okay, and I have another question for clarification. So, is TRC not the expert consultants that were already hired? Uh, I believe the town board, uh, Jane, yes. maybe it's best if you answer the, that. The town board approved TRC to perform odor testing at the openings that I described, mm -hmm. as we refer to as sort of rogue openings, uh, the unfiltered openings. During their inspection with Mr. Manzari, it was determined that there was 20 mm -hmm. outlets to to be tested, that testing was completed, and we're waiting for the results. It was completed last week. Okay, so results are not in. You know, it's, we were told it's gonna take a couple of weeks to receive those results. TRC is uh, one of the companies we w would consider recommending. I sent them an email to find out if they would actually be, you know, do the engineering review as part of uh, their services as well. I haven't heard back. And so ju just to clarify, so the mechanical engineering expert that you want is go going to review all air circulation inside the facility, outside the facility, and air being transferred in and out of the facility? Is that right? Yes. Well, we, I, again, I haven't spoken directly and developed the scope of work. However, it seems to myself and Mr. Manzari and DEC inspectors, something's not working. Basically, the proposal was to bring in fresh air into to dilute the air within the building. And the fresh air was brought in, as you can see by these blue lines, those are, that's actually fresh air coming into the building. And the idea is that it gets diluted before it exits the building. Problem is, you're bringing in forced air. And now it's getting pushed out all of these openings. It's not like it's getting pushed up through the two units, which are here that have the carbon filters on them that it, we have described as being black. So the building is broken down into compartments and we started here, this is the offices, this is where I observe the smell outside the building. You come into the offices and then we enter into this way and you go through each section and this is warehouse, this is just storage. Once you get into this section is where the smell really kicks in. This is where the perfume smell comes from. Um, so the idea is that I think it's finding the path of least resistant and maybe the dilution factor is not the right factor. Maybe the concept is correct, but something's not working based on the observations that we have and, and the complaints that are still coming in. Well, I have a question. I'm not an engineer, so I don't know any of the uh, mechanical pieces behind this, but irregardless of whether the system that was put in or not put in uh, correctly or put in correctly and is not working, irregardless of that, isn't the fact that there's all these open vents an issue in itself? We believe so. So do we need? Well, that's what, if we hire uh, an engineer that has experience working in this type of facility in designing or reviewing system design, they can better answer those questions. But was not part, I'm sorry. 
I don't, was not part of the agreement that everything that was going to be open would be closed? Was that not part of the original decision? That was my understanding, yeah. and it, it's obvious it has not been completed. So right there we know that Although there's... Although we did receive a letter from Mr. Corla Par the Corla Power Engineering saying that it's in conformance, which I do not agree with. It's not working. So Why they're it's not... it's not working, I don't know, but common sense says to me it's either the dilution factor is wrong or it's just it's being pushed out of these openings. But regardless of whether that's working or not, part of the original decision was that everything was going to be closed. Correct. And that did not happen. That did not happen. Okay. Thank you. My, my concern now is timing, right? I mean, we've gone through all this. We asked for a lot of things to happen initially, which we questioned some of the dilution factor early on talked about the venting, but now what, so we're going to hire another consultant to do this. How long, right? Because it's still happening. And what is going to change in the time frame? And also in the fact that these, your, the consultant has already been denied access. Well, and it was approved. Finally. 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 Right. But there seems to be a lot of pushing off here. So where's the guarantee that we hire another consultant and that consultant is going to be able to do what they have to do? Well, there is no guarantee, That's but if I we thought. have an expert consultant that can tell us that this system does not work, they have to or get possibly another solution. That's what we're looking for. M myself and the inspectors or anybody no. okay. in DEME is not qualified in this type of engineering. Okay. So that's why we're asking is the next step. I mean, we just keep going out and doing inspections and keep finding things. We, we okay. need an expert. Much like we have expert drainage consultants for drainage issues when projects are reviewed. Okay, so just to, to clarify the section of code, Jane, that you had mentioned, it's section 4.11, and I'll paraphrase, it says, no land or building shall be used or occupied in any manner as to create any noxious or otherwise obje objectionable odor. All referred to herein as dangerous or objectionable elements in a manner or amount as to adversely affect the surrounding area. So that's clear in the performance standards. That's what we're trying to replicate. Sure, that, that was just for the record. Well, Jane, Jane, just to clarify, is that one of the violations that you're, you feel there's a reasonable violation or whatever the language, uh, a reasonable, you have a reasonable belief that that is a, one of the violations that Aloof has committed and, or is committing? Yes, we do. I do. And so this is Mr. Manzari who can speak for himself, but we've been working diligently on trying to solve the problems and it's not working. And these, the other permit that I mentioned, that's not in compliance. So we re we've asked them to, provide as-built as drawings of the installation of the other permit. And once they're received, they may have to come back for that under a separate ZBA application for performance standards. Okay, that, then I think the, the second one, which you had mentioned, is uh, the de denial, sorry, reasonable grounds of leave, which are obvious, is the de denial of access to, uh, to their facilities, which if there's any further delay, if they turn away once once more, you have to let us know immediately and we'll get on a, we'll get a public meeting together and clarify that. Okay. Okay, great. Um, are there any further questions from the board? At this time. Uh, I actually have a legal question. Sure. Actually, what, just one That more. I would like to oh, sure. um, ask in private. Okay. Just give me Sorry, could you just repeat that for the record because it's some it's important procedurally. Yes. Yeah, yeah. One second, Jane. Yeah, yeah. Patricia. Um, and Mr. Manzari, do you, do you agree with uh, Jane's testimony? Well, swear him in, please. I already right. did. Oh, yeah. you did? Okay. Yeah, he's swearing. Is there any gaps or any anything that we missed or that we didn't cover? <laughs> okay, sorry, Patricia. That's okay. I do have a legal question that I would like to ask in um, An attorney client, attorney client confidential mm -hmm. discussion. Yes. Thank okay. You. Do you want to hear that? Is it important that you ask me that legal question now and you hear my legal counsel privately now, or can it wait till we open up? It could have, we can wait. Okay. okay. Um, at this point, if, if there's a uh, legal representative from Aloof who wants to speak, we'll allow that. Okay. 
you have to say that. Uh, Can you please uh, raise your right hand? Sorry. Sorry. Sorry to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I'll be out. I do. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I just want to. I just want to make clarify one note. You you do have uh, as much time as you would like to to rebut this, just because well, you're the. Yeah. Okay, but we were told we had three minutes, so we're not prepared to fully. I rebut didn't. It. I didn't mention that to you. I know. We they. Were, the client was sir, I'm, that clarif the phone I'm clarifying it for you right now. You have unlimited time, and and that's unfair because we weren't prepared to have unlimited. And we time. intend on we minutes. intend on continuing this evening as well. I'm sorry. We're, we intend on not making a decision tonight. Oh, I understand. Okay. Right, and what's what I was going to say that we were this is the first time here that we were told that uh, the only decision that was being made tonight is whether to conduct an investigation. That's not what we were told earlier. Um, the notice that we got appeared to say that what the decision was going to be made here tonight is whether they revoke the permit, which... Uh, Mr. Carr, you're back here. Is that on? Is that on? Uh, Mr. Carr, can you make sure your mic's on? Just bang it. Yeah, yeah I think it's on. I think you need to okay. a little closer. All right. Well, Does, can't can, raise can this up, rate? can you? <laughs> uh, I'll just try to speak louder. Um, I usually don't have a problem being heard. Uh, <laughs> They're outside. So we were coming here tonight expecting that the decision was going to be made was a revocation of the permit. So uh, what I'm about to say here is somewhat different. Um, although I didn't expect that I was going to come here and have to give a basic civics lesson, but the way our system works is that every man, woman, and child is entitled to protections under the United States Constitution. Whether we like it or not, corporations are treated as people under our Constitution. And one of the most important rights under that Constitution is the right to due process under law. It's embodied in the Fifth and the Fourteenth Amendments. Everything that was done leading up to this hearing tonight was in contravention of Aloof's due process rights. We didn't get the notice. We were told we only had three minutes to respond, so we couldn't possibly prepare a technical response to all that we heard tonight. Half of what we heard tonight was brand new. One of the memos that we saw was something that was issued just today, so we couldn't possibly respond to all of this. I'm not a technical guy. We have technical people, and if they'd been given sufficient time, we could have prepared a technical response but we didn't have, certainly didn't have the opportunity to. If this board decides to hire a mechanical engineer to do this investigation, that's one thing. But if we're then coming back here in a couple of weeks and just going through this again, we're only going to be given limited time to respond to all of the technical information that's going to be produced from that. And if we're only given a couple of days to respond to the report, then we're really just back here again. Sorry, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but mm -hmm. just, just to clarify those two points. That is a discussion I had, which is why I stopped the deputy town attorney of trying to pick a date when the next meeting would be. Mm -hmm. I want enough time to, for us as well to, to examine what's been done, the public, so they can see what the reports may or may not say. Understood. And all that. We want to make sure all of our ducks in a row before we do come back. Terrific. And yeah. then as long as we're getting it in time, we can respond to it. And I'll just state for the record that all submissions to this board as with any land use board other than attorney client confidential communications will m must be made available to the public at during regular business hours um, a freedom of information law application is not necessary however we will require as a standard procedure a sign-in sheet just so we have record of who's come into the building zoning planning department and has re reviewed records so if there's anything missing we at least have a trail, you know, we ha it's a, a standard sign-in sheet, that's all. A freedom of information law request will not be required for any part of this official record. And we will also make any reports that we receive from any expert consultants to this zoning board or those submitted by Aloof Plastics will be made immediately available to anyone who wishes to view them. And copies can be made for for a reimbursement fee, the, you know, whatever the charge is that, that the outside reproduction facility charges, if it's a large drawing, or 25 cents per page for up to legal size, uh, you know, the standard freedom of, freedom of eviction law fee. And I'm only re making refer reference to the FOIL law just for purposes of what the standard fee would be, 25 cents per page up to legal size. If the out... <laughs> Large size drawings have to go out than whatever the actual cost of the town is, but immediately available, you know, within, you know, practical limits. You know, you can't just walk in and expect, you know, service within seconds. You know, you have to allow some time. Okay? All right. I appreciate what you said, but I think you have to appreciate that Aloof isn't in the same position as every other member of the public. If we're talking about just this ventilation system alone, they spent nearly half a million dollars last year on that system. 
They're not in the same position as everybody else. They have a valuable property right in this permit, in the CFO, in that system, in their ability to continue to operate. Well, Nobody not, else is in exactly that position. I'm not sure what your objection is to having, is to having the records re immediately, ava relative, you know, immediately available as soon as it no, comes. But <laughs> how far in advance of the next hearing? When you say immediately available, it's one thing to say, okay, it's available to everybody immediately. Now we're going to have a hearing in two days. I understand. Okay. I don't believe that's what's anticipated, and I, I would think that this board would want time itself to digest it, as Chairman Sullivan indicated. So uh, I believe we'll give not only uh, the public but Aloof Plastics a reasonable opportunity to have whatever reports we receive from the ZBA's expert consultants time to digest and, and respond to. It's, it's not only in our best interest, it's in your best interest, too, to give us ample opportunity. Understood. So we can't attack it on the basis of constitutional issue. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, please. Okay. First, I did not advise anybody, uh, as they said, that they were going to get three minutes. So the fact the lawyer misspoke. I did not speak to anybody regarding that. I'm not sure who advised them of that. Aloof's request was made on Monday, March 19th. I was not present at the time and available to fulfill a FOIL request. Now, whether or not there was a mistake made within that department, so be it. Our, as everyone knows, our FOIL system within the town is actually under review at this point, and we're trying to streamline the entire process. So with that said, when I met with Mr. Lawson out in the field on the 19th, he advised me of it, and I said, when I go back to the office, I'll take a look, no problem. We fulfilled his requirement the next day on the 20th. Now, whether or not there was a delay in him receiving the notice, if Mr. Brenner was down in the records as being an attorney of record, which very well may be on some applications, that's where it's supposed to go. That's the contact person. So the delay was not on our department's part. It was released and noticed officially. As far as them not knowing about this, I just talked about the fact that at my December 19th meeting, I outlined all these issues then. And I know Mr. Lawson watches the, the meetings because he said it to Mike Manzari that he watches them. So for them to say they did not know, we have given them checklist, you know, punch list after punch list. They have open permits that had expired that they didn't fulfill. So for the attorney to stand up here and say they have lawful rights, that's correct. But we also have rights, and we have to enforce the law. We have to enforce our zoning code, as well as the life, safety, and welfare, not only of the applicant and the occupants of that building, but the surrounding neighbors and the town itself. And that's all we're trying to do. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, Trisha, do you want to take that attorney client? As you wish, or I could do it later. It doesn't matter. I think that's a good time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do it now? Yeah, now's a good time. So we'll take a five minute recess for an attorney client privileged discussion. Yeah. Basis tonight for tonight. Right, so, uh, Jane, and we'll, we'll follow up with this at the end of the evening. Um, we're going to try to push this forward and as fast as we can. So, we're going to ask you if you could give us a list of uh, experts and as well as the, uh, the scope of the work. Um, we'd like to review that before we actually hire somebody. Um, and we, we would also, we're going to try to move it again, expedite this decision. We have to make a decision after we know who the person is. So, we're going to have a Brief meeting on Thursday. Uh, this March Thursday. 29th. Hold on, let me go back to my calendar. It's uh, this Thursday, March 29, 7 o'clock p.m. I'm assuming this meeting is, room is available. Does anyone? Well, it's. 
I, I won't, it's going to be a, it's not, we're not going to open it up for public comment. It's more of a meeting to get together as a board to determine what the scope of the work is, who the engineer is, and then so we can proceed for, forward. Um, it's a legal issue more than. Right. So the purpose of the meeting will be to review Jane Slavin's recommended mechanical engineers and slash or expert consultants and to make a motion to choose one or two or three that you feel uh, would, would serve the needs to pursue this investigation. That's the subject of this public hearing. And public, although the public is absolutely uh, entitled and has a right to attend that meeting, uh, I don't believe it's the intention to allow any public comment, uh, but there will be a continuation of the public hearing beyond this Thursday and of course beyond this evening at which public comment will be received and, and, and heard. Correct? Correct, thank you. So just for the record, uh, we're not ending now, but this public hearing will remain open and continue to this Thursday, uh, March 29, 7 o'clock p.m. in this meeting room. And by making this announcement, it obviates the need for any public notice whatsoever that may be required by state and or local law. Okay. Um, so at this point, we'll open it up for, to the public for comment. Uh, we try to really ask you to keep your comments brief. We don't have all the information. We're not making a decision this evening. Um, everybody will be sworn in. We will need your full address. And uh, I think that's it. Um, there will be, again, we're, we're waiting for the, the results of these two reports that we're going to receive before we take a, a, another, a further step. Um, and the date of that hearing is yet to be determined. So uh, one at a time, please come up and again, try to keep it brief, limited to a three minute max. Um, however, they can't hear you outside. The light on? Yeah, it's on. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it? I do. All right, name and address? My name is Anthony Lawson. Yeah, speak closer to the mic. Uh, microphone. How's that? My name is Anthony Lawson, um, 2 Glenshaw Street, uh, Orangeburg. 2 Glenshaw Street, Orangeburg. Anthony Lawson, L-A-W-S-O-N. 2 Glenshaw Street, Orangeburg, New York. Ready? Ready. I've been employed with Aloof Plastics as their corporate engineering manager for about five years now. I've worked with the town for a long time, almost two years, uh, trying to give them an understanding of our building and its operations. Um, I've listened to the presentation tonight, and I realize that there still is misunderstandings as to what is negative pressure and positive pressure in the building, and what is an opening, what is a vent, and what is an intake, okay? Uh, things do not move back and forth in the building. They only move in one direction. Um, I'll continue to work with the building department uh, so that they understand how our plant works. Uh, but I don't have enough time to refute all of the things that uh, Ms. Slavin said as far as openings in the building and holes in the building and uh, abandoned components and things like that. Um, so. I don't want to take up a lot more time without going into great detail as to what the reports are. Certainly the ones that we just received tonight will need more examination as far as what we were running at the particular time those reports were made. Um, okay, and I'm glad that you're going to continue it because we just don't have it tonight. You, you just can't make a reasonable decision. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lawson, just one, one point. Um, just to let you know that, just got it. Just to, just to let you know that we, we are trying to push this along. So you, you will be under a micro, microscopes, so to speak, right now. Because now we're, direct, we're working with Jane and our own experts to make sure that the system that you proposed is adequate. And if it's not, we're going to make recommendations to ensure that it okay, is. Okay, so what you need to do first is you need to read what was proposed to the building. And somebody that's proposed during the last EBA meeting that I appeared for when you, were, when you approved it, someone says that 
there are additional 20 outlets that were not included in that report. All those fans were included in that report. So there is nothing it's a, new. Uh, let's, uh, again, let's and not get into detail. We're, we're, you're, right. you're right, talking about negative and positive pressure. Right. Not something for us really to be discussing like this. Right. It's actually these expert engineers so that are going to provide us you, a report on, on what you should be doing. What to I'm, what I'm uh, telling you, okay, is that first you need to understand what was proposed and what was approved by the board. Okay, let's start there. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ray Huntington, 1A, Route 340, Orangeburg, New York. T-U-N, yes. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Thank you. Is your address in Parkdale? No, it's literally right on the corner. It's still Orangeburg. <laughs> Uh, I'm a mechanic, and um, I'm uh, pretty well paid for what I do, and uh, I'm very proud of having this job. Uh, you have a lot of opportunities to learn new things, and when it comes to the air quality, I've been working with the supervisors. They have an open door policy. Any problems, I go to them. We solve them as fast as we can, and I change filters there every day, six days a week, and there's hundreds of them, so obviously I can't do them all in one day. So everybody on every shift is doing it, and we do the best that we can with what we have. Sometimes you run out of parts, sometimes you don't have to wait, and uh, all I can say is I am very proud to work with these people. They, they really are trying to solve the problems for the community, and uh, I hope it continues. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Yes, ma'am. Your name, sir? Rafat Mari. Why spell it? I know. It's going to be hard. <laughs> so it's Rafat, R as in Roberts, A as in Apple, F as in Frank, A as in Apple, T as in. <laughs> and Mari, M A R I. M as in Mari, A R I. Which is Mari. That's it. And you're at? Rafael Mari. Yeah. Without the L. Rafa. 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 And your address? No L at the end. Uh, your One, 163 Arlington Avenue, Patterson, New Jersey, 07502. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, so let me make it closer so everybody hear me. Okay, my name is Lafat Mari, uh, and I gave you my address already. I've been works for uh, Alu 14 years now. When it comes to me, we ha I have, uh, or we have three generations work for Alu. I started with my father, and me, my older son, and my brother as well. And people are saying that it's not really a safety place to work in. If it's not safety, I'm not going to have my son work there, and my father is not going to have me work over there. My, my father has been there for like 20 years. I've been there for 10 years, and uh, my son five, my brother two. I have a big family over there as well. Uh, my uncles, my cousins for 20, 25 years, which uh, a lot of people works over there, related to me, to be honest with you. So we feel safe and aloof. Aloof, it's always been works with us, with our families, support us and our families. And I believe the more than 350 employee. So uh, we feel comfortable to work with Aloof. We have no problems with Aloof. I know that Aloof trying to make our neighborhood <clears throat> happy with solutions, uh, find the solutions, to our arms, uh, what they say, we spend a million of dollars. By the way, I'm a maintenance manager. So I know what's going on over there, how much they spend money on ventilation system, filtration, and many, many things. We try to make everybody happy. We want to solve the problem. We just get um, ideas and engineering, saying this is solve a problem, that solve a problem, and we went through many, many things. And we're going to keep going. 
trying to make everybody happy, our neighborhood, and everybody else. And I know that you guys are not taking any decision right now, but please, when it comes to the decision, uh, we need you guys to let Aloof uh, give the, you know, the full facts and information about the facility. It's a 350 employee, and if it's, it's gonna be the wrong decision or uh, it's not the right or negatively decision for more than 350 employees, so you're gonna have more than 350 families without job. Those people, they have bills, responsibility, and many, many things as everybody else. And uh, thank you. Great, thank, thank you. you. Hi, my name is Jasmine Schwaid. S-C-H-W-A-I-D. To Glenshaw Street. Please raise your right hand. Excuse me? Raise your right hand. That is. Sir, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you. So I've been, I've been employed by Lou for five years. <clears throat> and I would ask that before you take action against Lou, they said you take consider, serious consideration on the major economics impact that it would take on Orange Town. We have 150 employees. Sir, mm -hmm. sorry, it's, if, you, if you'd like to be heard, you can wait online, sir. I'm sorry. So we have 150 employees that, are, that live currently in Rockland County, and 50 or 60 of them are, Orange Town, um, are working in Orange Town in our loop plastics. Um, we want to give you an idea how much we use the local residents and local facilities we approximately order 40 meals per shift, and we have three shifts in our facility. So that's a lot, of, you know, a lot of meals that just our employees alone are ordering. We also like to let you know that we employ Orange Town with a lot of different contractors. We have multiple vendors and suppliers that uh, employ dozens of Orange Town residents. So I would ask that you get all the facts straight before taking actions against the because it takes negative economic impacts of your decision, would would uh, def definitely reach impact of our of your decision would very broad reaching for hundreds of Orange Town residents. So it's going to impact a lot of people here. Not having the jobs here, not not be able to uh, all lo local residents and businesses and contractors just by not having us around. So just please take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm Fred Hernandez. I'm from uh, 45 Hudson, Nyack, New York, 10960. Uh, and uh, I'm going to raise your right hand. Oh. Sir, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I, I do. Thank you. Uh, I've been with the Lou for coming up on my second year as a dispatcher. And uh, I spend a lot of my time in Orange Town, uh, Nyack, Orangeburg, this, and, and even before Aloof, most of my life. And, um, I, you know, we, myself and my coworkers, my colleagues, we, you know, we contribute to the local economy here. We, we go to the local restaurants. We go to, the, we partake in the local businesses. I mean, we bring a lot to the area. And we do contribute to a lot of the business here. And uh, <clears throat> what you heard here tonight, I mean, what you heard from the building <coughs> department isn't accurate. And uh, we believe that you should, you know, listen to all, get your facts straight <laughs> before uh, make a, any decision against us. Uh, and just so we're clear, there's no decision being made tonight? No. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm just... Oh, no, just we want to, you know, we want to be heard and get our side. There, and again, there, there will be additional meetings following up from this after we have more information, just as you're stating? Yes. That, okay. Okay. All right. That's uh, my answer. Because, I, I mean, we do, and just so the, so the workers understand, we understand that there's business there. We want workers there. Mm -hmm. The neighbors don't want the smell that's coming out of there, which is what we're trying to remedy. Mm -hmm. And that's the main cause of this issue, finding that balance between the two. Okay. 
Is that it? Okay, great, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Good evening, my name is Mike, M-I-K-E, Abdurrahim, A-B-D-E-L-R-A-H-I-M. D as in David, E, L as in Laurie, R-A-H-I-M. 118 Haverhill Ave, H-A, V as in Victor, E-R, H-I-L-L. Woodland Park, 07424. It's in New Jersey. New Jersey. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing I but do. the truth? So be God. I do want to, I'm not going to take one minute. We moved here to Orange Bigs since 1986, and I've been employed before that. We are in the bag making business. I just don't want to, you know, I've been working, even my son, my own family, a lot of my own family working here. If anything wrong with this company, I will not be, I'm the first one, will not work in this company, in, the, in any envi in bad environment. And I just wanna say, and by the way, the most friendly people, you know, the most friendly town I ever seen is Orangeburg. And uh, we, you know, we trying, I work as a supervisor in this company, we trying to do our best to make a good environment, not for only the Orange Bay, for us also. We are a human being, we work in this company, we want to see this company with, you know. And by the way, you know, just small comment, <coughs> if you are in bag business, probably you're going to smell the bag or the plastic, the athlete. If you are in a meat market, you're going to smell the meat. Or a chocolate factory, you're going to smell the chocolate. But if anything poison, I will not be working in this company. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to be heard? My name is Harold Meklovitz, M-E-C-H-L-O-V as in Victor, I-C-S as in Sam. Thanks. Two Orchard Hill Drive, Muncie, New York. Do you swear to tell the, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Huh? I don't swear, but I will tell the truth. Do you solemnly affirm, affirm, affirm under penalty of perjury that everything you say will be true to the best of your knowledge? I affirm. Thank you. Um, I've been working for Aloof Plastics for 41 years. Um, I started with the company in 1977. And in that, in that time period, we, we started out in... Uh, Edison, New Jersey, we moved, we had uh, three lines in Edison, New Jersey. Uh, we, we, we moved, uh, after a fire, we moved to uh, Clifton, New Jersey, where we expanded. And finally, we moved to Orangeburg. In the, in the 41 years that I've been working for Aloof, all I've seen is constant improvement on safety, air quality, and benefits for the employees and for the environment and for the surrounding areas where we've been working. Um, that's basically all, all that's basically what I have to say, and, and I think that uh, a lot of thought has to go into um, investigating what exactly is the problem with this, with, with the environment or the, the, that is perceived as being caused by loose plastics. Thank you. Great, thank, thank you. you, sir. Next. 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 Jessica 
Smith. Number six, Iroquois Avenue, Palisades. Iroquois. Please raise your right hand. Sorry to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you out. I do. Thank you. I, I just want to say that as a resident, I don't see anyone wants to take anyone's livelihood away. Um, but the residents of this town have rights. And the workers have rights. I can't speak to that. I'm not in their position. But we all have a right to breathe air that is not toxic or foul. Um, there may be 350 employees at Aloof. There are many thousands more residents here. Um, my son is one of nine classes of first graders. Uh, every single one of those children will be going to school within a very small radius uh, near to Aloof and breathing this air. And those children have a right to clean air as well. Um, with regards to the effect on the economy here, um, I moved here from the city looking for some clean air and a decent school. And I used to tell everybody who would listen, come up to Orangetown, it's fantastic, it's a beautiful place to live, the people are lo lovely, whatnot. Um, and I don't say that anymore. So, you know, that's an effect on our economy too. If people don't wanna live here, people don't wanna pay the taxes here, people don't wanna send their kids to school here, that has an effect on us as well. But oh, the overriding factor for people who work in Aloof or people who live in the town is that we all have a right to breathe clean air. And that's all I have to say about it. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Sal Valenza, V as in Victor, A-L-E-N-Z-A. 13 Valenza Lane, Lava, New York. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Thank you, sir. Okay. First question is, um, what does your address mean? I I'm confused by that. This woman claims to live in a factory. Your, your address is, is to... Is that not where you live, or is that where you work? No, it's to identify who you are in case we have to come back and ask you further questions so based on this testimony. So you go to the factory to find her, I guess? Uh, the woman claimed the address... Where's I assume those people that are giving the address of 2 Glenshaw are workers at Aloof Plastics facility. So right, it sounds like your is, question is geared toward whether or not they have a right to be heard at this meeting. No, it is, that's not the question. The okay. question is whether or not they're answering the question you ask them. You ask them where, what their address was. They gave you the, the address of where they work, right. not where they live. There are many people here I in I think this we room. all understood that. Okay. You, you told <laughs> is me there anyone here that was confused by the two Glenshaw, that that, that was where they lived? Okay. Then why did she not answer with where she lived? I can let her come back up here if she wants to give her home address. I'll cede my time if she wants to come and give her home address. But if you want to use your address for where you work, there are a lot of people. So the reason that I'm here this evening, because I was, I was, excuse me? No, no bad. All right, no, oh, no, no, sorry, not, sorry, sir. Sorry, I got it. I got, quite, you got it. Talk. The reason that I'm here this evening is because I was sitting at home minding my business and looked on Facebook and heard that the meeting that was going on to discuss Aloof had been stacked with Aloof employees and that Orangetown residents could not get in the room. So what I, would, what I would say to you all is, I think you're probably gonna need a bigger room next time you do this. I mean, this just doesn't seem right to me. I wasn't going to say a word until the fact that we don't care that the woman's address is not her address. You know, if we're gonna have people come up and speak, I think if they're going to swear they're telling the truth, they need to answer the questions correctly. Thank you. 
sir. No, there are two. All right, enough. Point made, thank you. Hello, Dimitri Lattice, 31 Liberty Street, Piermont. L-A-D-D-I-S. 31 Liberty Street, Piermont, New York. Please raise your right hand. If you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll help you God. I do. Thanks. Just listening to some of the comments made by um, some of the company officials was very disheartening. Because we, they talk about rectifying problems that they've never acknowledged. They've actually put out public statements claiming all sorts of falsehoods about the state and the town and everybody has cleared them of any culpability in the smell. And it is the very smell that is the major problem here. And you have a building inspector and a director of the building department who spoke very eloquently and I really appreciate the presentation, who told us all, it smells. And it's the very performance standards that you're reviewing are about smell. And other various violations, obviously. But we heard the performance standard that states, you can't smell, you can't have a factory that smells that causes people harm, that causes their property values to drop through their smell. And we have the attestation of our town officials stating, it smells, it smells, it smells. And you have a company that denies the smell. It's as simple as that. Done. Performance standards failed. Violations left and right. Done. I appeal to you, what does a professional expert bring to the equation? When everybody knows, tells you, all the employees here will tell you it smells, okay? We have a hundred or so witnesses here that tell you how badly this place smells. And we have performance standards that are written into the law that state you cannot have a factory that stinks up the neighborhood. Done, we're done. And this has been going on like a dance. Now you have also a company that tells you they're acting, you know, the company has its, um, its own rights as a corporation, and we have residents telling you that we have rights to, we do deserve that our kids go to school in clean air. We have students from uh, the college who deserve to breathe clean air. We have all these employees who deserve to work in an environment that has clean air, and I can tell you that is not clean air. So this is not a company that is acting in good faith. Okay, and the very fact that they stacked the room in order for us not to be able to sit and to discourage us from speaking is an act of bad faith in my, in my view. Now, we also know that the air was measured to be toxic beyond levels that are acceptable by New York State. And that's a whole other issue. But thank you for letting us speak. Great. Thank, thank you, thank sir. You. Maureen Aitchison, last A-I-T-C-H-I-S-O-N. Orangeburg, 78 Dutch Hollow. So. Uh, please raise your right hand. Oh, yes. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be honest. Yes. Thank you. So, just anecdotally, this company is talking about how family friendly they are and how unbelievable it is to work for, but yet <coughs> these people haven't been home to see their families today. So, if there's anyone waiting for them tonight, they're probably, the kids are going to be asleep. And so, you know, again, so that to me is a contradiction of being a family friendly company. The other part that they were talking about is um, economics. And yes, we all want a good economy. We all want our families to thrive. We all want everyone to have a good job, good paying jobs. But what good is a good paying job if you are breathing in who knows what and it's just noxious and 
it's an assault on your senses as soon as you breathe it. So to me, it's like, why would you want to, w the equation of being a good, you know, having a good economic uh, neighbor, you know, all these great jobs, it's a, to me it doesn't make any sense if you're not going to be breathing quality air and taking, you know, being able to go home to your family at night. So to me, it just doesn't make any sense. And I empathize with all the employees. We are residents here. You are employees for the company. We are all in this together. To me, we just need to make it better. And it's just the, the length of time it's taking is just unacceptable. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next. Elizabeth Dudley, 250 South Green. Oh, yes, Dudley. Yeah. 250 South Greenbush Road in Orangeburg. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you are? Yes, I do. Thank you. I also empathize because. These people are working hard. And we come here and we work hard too, and we want to enjoy our homes. And, you know, I, I don't want to worry all the time about my kids going to school and breathing it in. And then I live down the block and we breathe it in. We can't even have a catch in our front yard sometimes. It's so bad. And I just, you know, I just want to implore you to really try to be honest and forthcoming with solutions on both sides. We all are just looking for some relief. Summer's coming. I want to have a catch with my son. I want to use a bike path. That's things we can't do. It smells all the time. I want to be able to ride with him to school. We can't do that because it smells. So. I don't want to play the blame game. I know you're working hard. Excuse me, can you just address the board? You know, well, listen, they're here to the, listen the to rules us. Are, the rules are to address the board. Oh, okay. I just don't want, I'm. Okay, I, I, I just want to know because I gave my I'm real address, to, I'm, so. I'm just trying to make it non obtrusive. Okay, okay. So anyways, um, you know, I just, I, you know, as everyone gets up, we're not trying to take away jobs. We're not trying to shut down Aloof. We just want a solution to whatever, you know, this problem is, and we want them to take responsibility. They haven't done that so far. You know, sometimes yes, sometimes no. So let's, you know, let's put that out there. Thank you. Great. Thank you. My name is Alex Gadd, G A D D. And yes, ma'am. We've established I have to give my entire address, correct? All right, because um, it's clear that this is a rather intimidating. Sir, if you, if you don't, if you would like to lie under oath, that's That's, no, that's okay, can I give my work address? Seriously. Sir, I'm, the, the questions are to state your name and your address, and okay. I'm serious. Don't ask me questions. You could okay. state your name and address. All right, I, I live at 8 Murphy Court in Blauville, abutting the property. Great, thank you. Please raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you out. I do. Thank you. I came up to speak because I don't want to be intimidated in my own town, in my own city hall. And I refuse to cede the floor to people who don't have our interests at heart. And I respect all the workers, but we're not talking to you, and I'm sure you're not talking to the workers. You're talking to the owners of the company who are not following the rules. And it's very important that we note that spending money does not equate to doing things that are of any value if the money is poorly spent. So you do, no one gets credit for spending a lot of money if they spend it badly. And I think that's very important to have on the record. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. <laughs> Next, anybody? Hello, my name is Agnes Caniza. C as in Charlie, A, N as in Nancy, I, Z as in Zebra, A. I live on 18 Spruce Street in Orangeburg, New York. Please raise your right hand. 
You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you out. I swear. Thank you. Hi. So I'm here tonight um, because I am concerned. I live on 18 Spruce Street. I live where on a bad wind day, I get either the smell of burnt plastic or the floral smell. And I know too many people here, you're probably tired of hearing this from every single citizen, but this is my day-to-day -day life. I also have three young children, 11, 10, and eight years old. My oldest went to Cottage Lane, my second one is in Cottage Lane, and my third one will enter Cottage Lane. A lot of the reports were talking about the air quality being on Erie Street, right? That is right next to where Cottage Lane is. I am concerned about my children. I am concerned about being able to have quality of life with my family. My husband is a cancer survivor, so I am concerned about that as well, okay? So it is my livelihood too. I'm sorry if it affects other people's livelihood in other ways, but I do have to, as a high property tax paying citizen in this town, be concerned that you know, it is affecting my home and my quality of life. So thank you, have a good evening. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dave Rodriguez, 88, 13th Ave. Steve. I've been working for a loop. Hold on, hold on, hold on. First name is David. Dave. 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 Dave Rodriguez. Sh Dave. Short for David. Any address? 88, 13th Ave, Amwood Park, New Jersey. Yes. <laughs> okay, now I'm ready for you. Sort of tell, raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Honestly, yes, I do swear. Thank you. In and out, the parkway air, the fresh parkway air to my local home, my hometown, Elmwood Park, and local areas is the same fresh air that can be found at Aloof Plastic at any given time. I've been working here for eight years, and whatever force is to determine my, these thoughts, should put, should, should evaluate whether this is true or not. A single odor has never been smelled by me. And they've been talking about health. These people have been working here 40 years, 25, 20, people that I per work with personally, up in hand with these machines. And there's never been such health problems. You, they've, there's, there's no cancer been found, there's no asthma. These people have still been working till this day. The, the, fresh, the fresh air should continue and still be considered to be fresh air. Aloof Plastics have been working to, to, to figure out solutions. They spent massive money and to the econo economic side, a lot of businesses have and should still continue to be done on the eastern side of where Aloof Plastic does. We, we've done enormous business and this would most likely impact in economics. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Board. Before I end, would you please clarify the meeting on Thursday? We didn't quite hear it um, outside. Yeah, Dennis, um, Thursday's 7 p.m. Thursday, 7 o'clock, here in this meeting room, here in Town Hall. But Thursday night is good th Holy Thursday. It's a Christian night. It's the night before Jesus Christ died. And I believe that that meeting should be postponed in reverence to us Christians and have it the following week. Right, please, do good. consideration. That's um, I don't want my glasses. <laughs> I sort of want my glasses. Eileen so Morgan, here I go I don't again. Schedule the meetings. I'm sorry. I don't schedule the meetings. Yeah. All righty, thank you. Eileen Larkin, resident of Palisades, New York. As what's your, what's your address, Ms. Larkin? I read rather not give it for security reasons. 
I've had problems. I'm sorry. You can't force okay. people. To yeah. No, I raise, appreciate raise it. Raise your right hand. <laughs> you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I do. Thank you. All right, and I ask you to limit it to three minutes. Oh, come on. No, Eileen, I know. Why are you Sorry, picking on me? Some people didn't even have the clock I'm not picking on anybody. On. I have a clock going. I know, but some people didn't even have the clock. Yeah, they did. They, not everybody. Miss Larkin, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop Let's you Let's get on with minutes. the meeting. At this meeting, as, when I came here tonight at quarter to six, I found uh, ample parking in the parking lot. However, when I walked into the building and I came into this room, the room was filled. First, I thought I was at the wrong meeting. But then I saw that Aloof had asked their employees to stack the meeting hall tonight. I find that very disrespectful. Disrespectful to the people who live here in Orangetown, who came here tonight to, give a, to hear a presentation and to, um, to be able to speak. The, uh, obviously, Aloof has been disrespectful when it comes to uh, complying to our codes the environmental codes and the building codes. I have listened here tonight to hear the presentations on both sides, so obviously there is a problem over there, and hopefully it will be resolved to everybody's benefit. But um, I feel that if, if Aloof can be disrespectful to me, somebody who's lived here for over 40 some odd years, I've never seen anything like this in my whole life in all the years I'm coming to the meetings. Um, why was this done to us? The people who are bringing this issue up are forced to sit outside. I hope the people who came here tonight know that this meeting is televised. You are on television. I hope you're getting paid by Aloof to put in time here. I'm a strong believer in union and people getting paid for time that they're working for their employees. And I feel they are working tonight for their employees, for their employer. And I do hope that they are getting paid in some way, shape, or form. And I'm concerned, too, about their health. We don't want to close them down. We want the problems to be corrected. That's all we want. Anybody else? Hello, Heather Hurley, Pearl River, New York. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, I do. Um, I just had a couple of comments um, to make. Uh, first, I just wanted on the record just to state that an aloof employee, one of management, did say back in November 3rd, 2016, regarding odor issues, that they are, quote, determining how to solve the problem, work on the issue happens every day here at aloof. And I just wanted that on the record so that their employees do understand that their management is actually acknowledging that there are odor problems. Um, secondly, I did also want to agree with Eileen Larkin that Thursday is Holy Thursday. And I would also request that that meeting be moved. That's one of the high holiest days of the um, calendar of the Lenten season. And uh, I also would request that that meeting be moved. Um, and just in response to um, Aloof's attorney earlier tonight where he was talking about technical responses and providing all of these technical responses. I just wanted to say that no amount of technical responses will dispute the fact that odors continue to plague the surrounding area and adversely impact the quality of life for, for both the residents and the employees. Um, in the past, supervisor has said who actually did visit the factory that employees are working without masks and that it was it stunk inside there. Um, and the next um, questions I just wanted to address to the board to please ask uh, Mr. Anthony Lawson if he could please respond tonight was one, has a loose carbon filter been changed to a Midas carbon? If yes, when was that done? And also this, has- This application has nothing to do with Mr. Lawson tonight. It has to do with uh, the director of uh, building. So they can't answer any questions no, regarding not, any of the equipment? they're not an applicant, they're not. Okay, well I just would like them, like these two questions on the record regardless. Um, and number two, um, has Aloof changed the carbon filters in the IBC area and when was the last time? And that's all I have to say, thank you. Other than Clean Air for Orange Town continued to advocate for okay, both the community and the employees of Aloof and we do not want anyone losing any jobs, we want the odor problem fixed. <laughs> Go 
Christoph Witek, K R Y S T O F W I T E K T as in Thomas E K Town of Orangetown. Please raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Chairman Sullivan and members of this board. In the brief time allowed, I would like to highlight some of the events of the past couple of years. It has now been over two years since this ongoing wave of odor complaints from Aloof has begun. Starting in early 2016, till this day, the community members and Aloof neighbors reported to the town and the DC over 600 odor complaints. It is fair to state, and I hope that you would all concur, that the problem is being vigorously debated and yet still not resolved. In 2016, we were told that we have to be patient as the DEC and the town will address aloof carbon bed filtration system and that it will solve the problem. It did not. In 2017, we were told that we have to be patient as the DEC and the town will address aloof air ventilation system, that it will be upgraded and that it will mitigate odors. After months of delays, we found out that it didn't. Now, in the spring of 2018, we were being told by the DEC that Aloof had switched to a new carbon filter media and that it will solve the problem. Based on the recent odor reports, as recent as this afternoon, that also doesn't look good. We're here today, among other reasons, because the town inspectors recently discovered and documented that Aloof factory is full of holes which allow for constant outflow of unfiltered burning plastic odor emissions. Where and when does this end? On February 27th, Aloof trash compactor trailers went on fire and allegedly the fire spread to a nearby dumpster filled with tires. Satellite view of Aloof property shows over 20 trailers parked in the back. Are all these trailers filled with combustible trash? And how does that situation conform with the town performance standards? I do recognize that there are continuing efforts and signals of commitment by the town and the DEC to solve this problem. However, the members of Orangetown community shouldn't have to be subjects of what appears to be a never-ending quest. Mr. Chairman and the board, this community has run out of patience. How can you blame us? Thank you. Anybody else wish to be heard? Going once, going twice. Okay, so this meeting will be continued till April 4th due to the uh, Catholic holidays. Our intention was to expedite the decision simply to hire an engineer, but apparently due to the holidays, we'll postpone that till April 4th, which just uh, honestly delays the whole process. Right, but, 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 wait, hold on. It's, it's Greenbush Auditorium, so the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals is already scheduled for April 4th, which is uh, next Wednesday. And it's at Greenbush Auditorium, which is a much, much smaller room. Uh, that will be 7 o'clock p.m. Again, April 4, Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. at the Greenbush Auditorium, which is behind the building department and the Orangeburg Library. No public comment is anticipated to uh, be allowed to be uh, uh, heard. However, the public has an absolute right to be present. It's an open meeting, open to the public. So. Yes, the public hearing will remain open until that time, place, and location. Okay, I make a motion to continue until April 4th at Greenbush. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to close? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Personally? Personally?